Saturday night at 8.30 Mountain Time to show you the junk that we purchased throughout the week. We tell you what we paid for and what we're gonna sell it for. If you love thrift hauls and junk videos, make sure you hit that notification and subscription um, so that, or subscription, subscribe, whatever. Subscribe button. It's been a long week. Um, <laughs> and subscribe um, so that, that way you never miss a video. A lot of you guys are new here and that's cool. We love you and we want you to have fun with us if you wanna shop along. These items are listed at jrvhome.com. Kayla's dropping links, so you can also watch the live chat. And at the end of the video, we paint stuff, and we'll tell you where to get that later. All right, this is my favorite pick of the week. I found this sitting inside of another tarnished silver piece, and it is uh, EPNS, electroplated, uh, but it is... It's older, it's from the 1830s. It's North hey, no, Vancouver, 1930s. or 1930s, sorry. I was a century off. North Vancouver Ladies Lawn Bowling Club. So lawn it's a, Bowling. It's a trophy. Um, it says Lilius W. McCready, 1929, 1930, 1931. Lil she was this pretty was, good. This was the reward. You got this trophy. So the cool thing about trophies is they're super collectible, especially older ones in the 30s. And I actually looked these up and found trophies that were tarnished silver like this one that were probably a couple hundred dollars and anywhere from like 80 to 200 dollars. So we're selling this one for I think 69.95. I don't know because Zeb has it. It doesn't have a tag on it. Where's the tag? Oh, you wrote it on the tag. Yeah. It says fifty nine ninety five. Fifty nine ninety five, and how much did we pay for it? Five ninety nine. Five ninety nine. It's Zeb's a little rusty because we were on vacation last week. I just wanted to try to show him the engraving on here. The the name of the game is share the prices. <laughs> but anyway, just regular old tarnished silver. We find it all the time. If you can find a trophy with any kind of engraving that's old. People are scooping it up like crazy. Yeah, super collectible. I sold Repops in my store for a similar price. So this is a really great price for it. I don't, I know it won't last long. So if you find, I don't know if you know this, but if you're a flipper, if you find trophies, like scoop them up. Do not leave them on the shelf. Because even if locally you don't have a buyer, those definitely sell well on the online platform because people are searching for them. So this doesn't have a date on it. This is also electroplated uh, silver, bit of tarnish on there. This is what was hiding this, like so. And this reminds me of like a dog dish, fancy dog dish. <laughs> I don't know that I give it to my dog, but that's what Zeb said. He's like, it's a bougie dog dish. So we spent $3.99 um, and we're gonna sell it for $9.95. And it's not just silver plated, but it's electro plated, which is a little bit more valuable than just regular silver plated. Oh, it's Amber said that she's got a 1907 golf trophy. Yeah. That would be money. I like the lawn bowling though. I'm like, now I gotta Google it. Like what exactly is lawn bowling? So I think it's a lot like cricket, but with- It's like bowling, no, no but stick. on the lawn. No, no stick. All right, so this, I don't know where this came from because I don't remember thrifting it. Um, so this is from the Jamie Ray Vintage Personal Private Collection. <laughs> no, I have a few things here tonight that are just things that we've had for a long time. And I'm finally like, okay, I haven't found a place for this in the house. I'll let it go. So this, is uh, brass and it's a cool like heavy duty mug. It's just got like a really simple design and I love it. I probably paid like two or three dollars for it. I don't know, like I legit have had it for a long time and I'm selling it for $9.95. Oh, bocce ball, that's what. Uh, We're gonna just run through all the metals here. Yeah. So Ivana says, I found the items sell better the more tarnished it is. Yeah, so people True. love the look. I did see when we went to Round Top that some booths were polishing them a little and just leaving a little bit of age to it. But the patina kind of tells a story, right? Like this isn't some brand new silver piece. This is something that's aged over time. And that's why people like it. All right, so this is a little bell. I think this is also out of the Jamie collection. That is out of the Jamie. It's an. It's like got etching on it. Yep. It was on top of the um, cabinets in our last house. I don't even know if you could see them. 
Like when I moved, I was like, well, what are these doing up here? <laughs> um, and I think 695. 695 for the bell. I'd have probably paid like a buck or two. Again, yeah. it's from my own personal collection, so I don't know. We I usually, paid. back in the day, if we were thrifting these, we, we used to find a lot of these and we haven't found as many recently, but they usually about a dollar to two dollars. Yeah, if you, if you can get them, sometimes they're a little bit higher, but I like to stay in that price range and I love bells. Now and you've got COVID, you can't blow on the bottles. Sure you can. <laughs> so these are just simple blue-green bottles. I love to decorate with them. I paid $1.99 for them and I got them at Savers. Look. And I'm going to sell them for... I and revealed someone's fingerprint inside the bottle. It's with... like forensics. <laughs> Savers tonight was not an extra 20% off. I did she not, thought she was going to make it. I had a coupon and I didn't. But I then we so checked sad. out and the guy's like, nope. And she's like, can you double check? He's like, yeah, nope. <laughs> so prices were exactly what they, stickers on them plus tax. Because I also didn't give them my sales tax ID, which I should have. So anyways, so that's where we're at. Striking out. $1.99 each. So $4 for the set. I'm selling for $16.95 for the pair. What I love about them is the bottom. I don't it's know if you can really see it. Domed. like goes up and domes in like a little mountain in the bottom of the bottle. I have zero clue. I mean, maybe these were just, I don't know. I have no idea what came in them, but I really like them. It's how they got that extra thick glass on the bottom. <laughs> I, I love to put like flowers and stuff in them, so. They're a good blue-green color. They're not quite as blue-green as these. Are you selling these? Yeah. So I have, do you want to show them my, mine? I have four of these French canning jars on the shelf above. I I'll mean, show them in a second. I'm not going to be super sad if somebody doesn't buy these because i kind of obsessed with French canning jars. These were not thrifted. I have a picker that occasionally can source these for me. I pay about $39.95 per jar and I sell them for $69.95 and they sell well. Um, the brands are Durfor, Lideal, this one has like the name on the top, and this one is Solidex, and these are French canning jars, and the blue green, if you're not familiar, these are very, very popular. They are thick glass, not just on the bottom, but all the way to the top, so they're thick and wavy, and they're much heavier than like your traditional ball canning jars. I would say they probably weigh twice as much as a ball canning jar. The glass is thick just all the way around. And that's where I keep my French canning jar collection. There it and is so up there. I got four more of these. They're $69.95 each. And they're just luck of the draw. They're all about the same size and look. So they're fun. Les, I think it was Les, said that she loves the look of the new decoupage. Oh, thanks, Les. We just um, put the new decoupage paper up for pre-order on Friday. It should be here in a couple weeks, and we'll be shipping that out. And yep. the decoupage paper, I know there's a lot of these. That's on our DIY website, which is jamierayvintage.com, and that's where you get all the paint, the stamps, the IOD, the stencils. Everything you need to make over your projects is on that website. So I don't think we showed it on a video. I hinted towards it last week, and then we went out of town in California for a week, and then now I'm back and I will show you some big full-size pieces of it so you can get a gist of how big they are. Because on the website, they're little tiny pictures, right? So I'll, I'll show you a just couple, because I love to show and tell. Forewarning, Jane just which Jane is never up this late. So it must be like, I know that Jane ordered one before and Jane is New York, she never is up. She must have known that these were gonna be here tonight <laughs> because three of my four jars just sold. So if you wanted one, there's Anne jar left. <laughs> she also loves the French can of jars like me. Okay, so this is just like a little warming. I think you put like a little tea light down below here and it'll keep whatever you've got in here nice and warm a little burner the tarnished silver on this is excellent the detail is good it's got this awesome clasp on the on the top so with this tons is, of detail i think this is wb bro hold on these are different brands this one is oh, are we, we got two different lids no no this has it on here w so this is leonard electroplated no but this is wm rogers Okay, so we do, we are mixing the brands up a little bit, but we have a complete set. 
No, it's all the same brand. It's just stamped differently. This one's five dollars, and I'm selling it for twenty six ninety five. It says a different name. Jenna says I just donated that same serving dish today. Oh. Should I kept it? You done messed up. Well, here it is again. Ashley actually thrifted this for me. Ashley is Caitlin's cousin. She works for us now and does what Christy was doing for us. Um, and she found this, and I love it. And the the patina is especially beautiful on the bottom ironically so like if you flip it upside down there's the most gorgeous turquoise color like i can't get over it um it's just totally my jam maybe we it's been spent it. some time outside les said she took stuck her silver outside and got all like green and cool so well, all right let's show the other silver I think that's Les right lives in the south if i'm not mistaken where the humidity no, is high no les lives back east back east to south I'm, both close. I'm like 99% positive Midwest or back east not south. Okay. Correct me if I'm wrong Les. I know you will. I know you will whether I tell you to or not. All right so this is not our normal thrift haul. This goes with the kind of cottage core theme. Find stuff that just works and is beautiful all by itself and not having to really do much with it. Ooh, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Is that considered back east? I think that would be east. It would be in my mind, but everything outside of the countries in the uh, But east. still humid, gonna get a lot of uh, weather on your silver. The warmer is called the chafing dish. Chafing is just, sound, chafing to me sounds like <laughs> shorts in the summer and thighs rubbing together, so I called it a warmer dish. You just recently spent a lot of time walking 50 <laughs> miles at Disneyland. Zeb's like, one day Zeb's walking and he's got like this weird, I'm like, do you have some chafing? It was so humid, like, <laughs> I think it was Wednesday. It was. It got really hot and really humid, and we'd been trucking around all over Disneyland and California Adventure. And I think that day we also went to Downtown Disney. I was at like twenty three thousand steps on the day, and there was there was some situation. Some, some chafing, but it wasn't a dish. So Sue said that this is indication of being hand blown. Oh, nice. I don't know if these were, but yeah. <laughs> well, that makes them even cooler. All right, we got some Mikasa, the Platinum Matrix Bone China Dishwasher Safe. Yeah, so I had, I knew this was Mikasa, which always sells well for me, but I didn't know how valuable it was. I'm selling it for like way under what I found them for online because I got a good deal for it. Um, I sold it for, I'm selling it for $26.95 and I paid $4.99. The particular, did you tell them what brand it was? Mm -hmm. It's the Platinum Matrix Bone China, yep. but this one actually still has the sticker on it, which this is really sad, but I'm like 99% sure that that's like a Pottery Barn style sticker that I know <laughs> that. Um, and so I'm We're assuming, talking about Bone China and it's a gravy bone. I'm assuming this was never used because if it had been used, the sticker would have been like worn off. So it's got a little dust and age to it, but I'm pretty sure it's brand new. So it's awesome. Yeah, it's it's in good shape. No chips, no dings. I'm gonna gently take it over there so that I don't break it later when we start painting. Les said, why did my tarnished silver turn green? Um, probably the humidity in the area. And if it were me, I would leave it. We actually love to buy tarnished silver when we go to Hawaii because the salty humidity gives it the best patina. So anytime we're somewhere where we can get that kind of patina on our silver, we pick it up. So did I see that Jane already purchased this? Jane, and she would like it aviary. Oh, and she's <laughs> calling out what she wants. We gotta Jane, find some little so, knobs. Yeah, we've gotta find some little knobs. They probably won't match exactly, but the knobs on that thing is, are so dang cute. The I cool thing remember. about this is that it's metal. It's not like a, like the whole thing is metal, it's no like wood tin, on there, right? except for the knobs. I'm going to write aviary on the back because I can't possibly yeah, do it right remember. There. We paid $5.99 for it, selling it for $26.95, already purchased, so it's off the, it's off the market. Off the market! But it's got a little hole so you could hang it, it was a good find. Oh, Julie says, so I caught your live on my birthday. Happy birthday, Julie. Happy birthday. And we are glad to be back. It was weird to be on vacation all week, but I need a vacation for my vacation because if anybody has been to Disneyland with four children for four days, as much as we had a really great time, it was a lot of work. You know, nobody... And I really needed a nap every day about 2.30, 3 yeah. o'clock, but I didn't get one. <laughs> and to me, a vacation is when you need a nap if you can get it, and it wasn't that kind of vacation. No, was not. <laughs> we needed it. We need 
So what we really need is a staycation, but it's nearly impossible because if I'm at home, I start working because I get, I get bored. I don't, I don't sit around well, so I have to have like something planned to do. Otherwise, I'm just gonna start working. I'm really good at just like laying around. <laughs> the new pool helps out with that a lot. So 144 decor, I did mean four children. We have five children, but my oldest has a full-time job. And so he did not come. I did invite him to come. He but also he has full-time bills now too. <laughs> he got bills and a girlfriend and all kinds of things. So he did not come. All right, so this <laughs> Jane is... says I can go to bed now. Glad to have you back. <laughs> Good night, Jane. Re finish finish the, it up in the, the morning. Watch the replay with you with your animals in the morning. All right, so this is Nortec stoneware, <laughs> oven safe, detergent safe, microwave oven safe, made in Japan. Eight six six three Sunset Mesa, I believe, is the style, but just a great little. I would call it a creamer. Yeah, it's a creamer. Um, it's Noritake and. Oh, is that how you said that? I said Noritek. Yeah, it's Nora talking. <laughs> the it's, E is hard. I didn't realize that you had said the name when you said that because it was so not the name. But anyways, usually I'm the one hacking the names, which is funny. So 149 is what we paid for it and we're selling it for 695 for the creamer. And that's about right. I looked up those creamers and that's what they sell for. Nora Talky. Okay, All right. So this there. is another crock found in the wilds at the same savers. I wonder if someone just donated a bunch of it and they're just letting it out a little bit at a time because we went there friday night yesterday we, we got home off the plane and jamie's like uh, i don't feel like thrifting in the morning you want to go right now they they're open for another hour there are a couple things that we're involved in <laughs> one i was hungry and didn't feel like making dinner and i knew that zeb would buy me mexican food and two while i love my children we had a lot of family time we needed to have some not the whole family time so i was like let's leave for a few hours and thrifting was the perfect opportunity to get out of the house so i was super excited when i got this it is vintage not like 1800 stoneware Does this but the diamond? salt glaze um it's got like a little stamp you find here in the 1800s is worth in the hundreds of dollars um this is diamond brand it's about a quart size and i'm selling it for 24.95 and we paid 3.99 and it's got like the brown on the inside. It's just a really piece, a uh, great piece of salt glazed pottery, crockery, whatever you want to call it. I thought for a minute, maybe I had like scored the big score, but it was not 1800 salt glazed, but I will, I will take vintage that also works for me. All right. So these domes, we grab them when we can. We like to use them with wood, uh, um, rounds things like that or sometimes we'll find the stand and then we'll marry them together and there'll be a happy little cake plate in this case we're selling just the dome for $14.95 and we paid $4.99 it's super, thick. It's, super and it's thick. thick it's not the thin cheap domes when they're thin and cheap i leave them there zeb found one that was thin and cheap and had a base and i was like nope leave it there i like thick because i'm not saying it won't break if you drop it but it's less likely to break like i've had some so thin that it's broke while I'm washing them. Yeah, we had a couple that They were broke. from Walmart. I mean, bigger, but. <laughs> All right, more tarnished silver. Is this called the same thing as that? Because it doesn't have the, it's got feet on it. This is a server with feet, and that was a warming dish. So server. This one I paid $10.99 for. That one was only five bucks. Some people ask me if I have like a formula, and not really. This is the same price, it's $26.95 as the other piece, even though I paid twice as much, I'm not gonna charge twice as much. Things are only worth what they're worth. It really doesn't matter what you paid for. It says FB Rogers Silver yes. trademark on the bottom. And, which is a good brand. Um, and the feet are gorgeous. Oh, Sally Von's wall super chat. The pool looks wonderful. I'm packing my swimsuits. All right. Up. We spent the afternoon uh, in the pools that dug some holes for some like- We'll put some plants out there. <laughs> yeah, we put some bushes and some vines just to kind of grow through the fence, give a little privacy to the area. I mean, it's not going to fill in for like a couple yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. I'm We're very probably impatient. feeling pretty good by the end of the summer. We could go buy like eight more of them and it'd be okay now, but... Then they would be overgrown and we'd have yeah, to dig them out. It'd be so, so, so much. And it, plants are expensive. You know, you go to the nursery and you're pushing around your little cart and you're like, man, this is a lot of plants. You spend $400, you're like, Bleh. you get home and you, you spread them across the like, fence. You're like, oh, that, I need sparse. like, I need like eight times this many plants. <laughs> Did you get pool noodles? Unless you know I visited the dollar store already. 
We got noodles in the poodles. <laughs> Just kidding, noodles in the pool. All right, so they gave this to us for $2.99. It, did, it wasn't priced at the thrift store. I'm not seeing a price on it now. It's metal. It, oh. I can see peekaboo sunlight. The bottom would probably hold water if you wanted to use it like a vase. But right here where this little rope is kind of tacked on around it, um, it's, it's twisted, twisted metal. Um, but I can see peekaboo sunlight where that is on there. So you know use it as a vase at your own risk might be good for your fake flowers definitely going to be getting a paint job yeah so the, sorry i didn't put the price on there it'll be 16.95 once it's painted here's the thing i have an oil can that leaks a little like it's an antique one and my trick is i just put a plastic cup vase you know from the gas station i put it inside there this would need a skinnier one but you put the cup in there and then you just use that for your water and flowers and then it doesn't leak so for $2.99, I could not pass this one up. It's a wood little tote. Looks like there's some sort of, uh, it's got wood trim around it, but then there's this like vinyl mat. I'm probably gonna paint the red-ish color because I think the detail on this trim will look really cool and maybe even do some stenciling along here or just leave it as is if it looks cool. That was the pick, and yep. I like it. I like, it a lot. I like little trays. They work well as risers, you know, and get your flowers going on your centerpiece. It would be super little candlestick. Cute. We should paint it all up, but then stencil this part. This part so that it mm -hmm. can be used as a riser. Oh, so Thank smart. You. I like it. Leslie said that's a cool wood thing. That's not <laughs> a wood thing. All right, so this is resin, and it's got. If if you want to get. If you want to use it as Your a rattle maca. on, you can. It was $4.99, big kind of architectural looking piece, but you could put a candlestick on the top and it does have, it looks like someone glued it. I might need to take the heat gun to the top of that. Yeah, before we paint it, and I think somebody painted it this color, but the distressing is too much, I think. It, I, well, it looks like, so this is what happens when you don't use 220 grit sandpaper to distress. I'll sh come show you close. This was probably 80. It could have been a wet distress too. So. Uh, maybe, it looks scratched. It's, it was, this is probably about 80 grit used for distressing. This is the reason why we use 220, so you don't get like, the full streak. Caitlin says, what if that's money rolled up in there? There's no money in there, Caitlin. I, I don't know, maybe. Who knows, There's. it comes with a surprise inside. But you can even see it up here some, where it's like scratched there. So we're gonna, we're gonna give it a little more love. Wet distress pieces like this or very fine sandpaper is your friend. Yep, we're gonna sell for $16.95. Did you tell them how much it was? Uh, we paid $4.99. Les says she hasn't seen anything because she's been talking. She's like, all my friends are here! I know, we didn't have a Waste Not Wednesday live stream, so, you know, you guys were out of luck. It's been a whole week since we reconvened. So this I is guess like, convened would be the convened, way to say yeah. that. Um, this so, was the last, last ditch. I was, they were closing, and I was in the checkout, and Jamie comes running from the back. She's like, I found more stuff! It wasn't that herb. <laughs> no, it, was it wasn't that, this. Creamer and something else. I don't know. But $2.99. Zeb, Zeb kept rushing me through the store. There, the air conditioning was not functioning well, and he was angry the second he walked in because it was hot. Not like angry that he's yelling, but I could just tell he wanted out. And I was like trying to take my time. And here I am walking through the store with all my stuff, and he's like, four, he has the cart, and he's four rows ahead of me. I'm like, Zeb, come back. <laughs> Here's the thing. If I'm outside working in the yard, building the house, whatever, it's 100 degrees outside, I'm mentally prepared to drink about three gallons of water and it's going to be hot and I'm going to just power through and do that for the next 14 hours. When I'm leisurely in my flip-flops and shorts trying to go do some thrifting before they close, I don't want it to be 90 degrees in your store. Well, I'm willing to shop in the heat. And it does make deals. me a little grumpy. And they were stacked. We were there like 30 minutes before they were closing, and they had so much good junk. And they, like we get there, and they're like, the store will be closing in 30 minutes. Please come up to the front. I was like, yeah, 30 minutes. Don't you be rushing me. 
<laughs> so that was two ninety nine. We're gonna sell it for six ninety five. I don't even know that it needs a paint job. It's just great the way it is. It does yeah, need cleaned that. up. It's lived in a kitchen. Anytime you thrift stuff and it's been living in a kitchen, it always has like this washed. greasy like film that just collects dust. And it, at the end, by the time it's been there for eight years, there's like this layer of like I don't know fur looking stuff on your on your things. It's been mostly cleaned up, but it's still got a little bit. We'll get it all off before we send it out to you. So this probably was like a soup tureen. Oh, well, it definitely was. Um, it's ironstone. It's got crazing on it. It's got indented number in there and no brand on the bottom. And we paid. Here's the thing. So someone donated it to the DI, our other one of our other favorite thrift stores, the Deseret Industries. It sold for a dollar there, no lid. It then went over to the savers because someone didn't do anything with it or even take the sticker off. And we got it for $4.99 from the savers. And we're selling it to you for the low, low price of $18.95, which is actually a great deal for Ironstone. I love to plant in these. They look so pretty with like bulbs coming out of the top or grasses or succulents. Um, and so really for me, if I get a piece of Ironstone that has the lid and the, the spoon, it's kind of a waste because I'm just gonna plant it in anyways. So I love to find them like this because then I don't feel guilty. I can just plant in it and move on with my life. This wire basket is a prime example of a great little pick, but I don't know if it'll pick up in the camera. You can see the fur. Ivana says layer of fur is her next punk band. <laughs> well, here is a demonstration of what happens when stuff gets greasy and then dust starts collecting on it above your, on your kitchen shelves or whatever. You can see that on there and it sticks to every, it's like actually sticky when you touch it. <laughs> so we're, we bought that for $2.99 and we're gonna sell it for $9.95. It's perfect for eight. Let so me show you, eight. let me show you. We have a similar situation here with handles that hold our hard work and chicken Our basket eggs. is not furry, I'm proud to say. No, no fur on this one. This one gets used every day. We have chickens, if you don't know, in the backyard. So those are fresh chicken eggs. This basket's a little bit bigger, so. Might need to upgrade. That basket there with the wooden handles, we actually sell on the website too. It's just not, it's like something I buy wholesale. Fun fact about chicken eggs, because it's been a while since we've had some chicken trivia. There's an enzyme on fresh chicken eggs that if you don't scrub it off, they can stay out in the open for up to a month. Always float your eggs to see if they're bad or not, because you don't want to eat a rotten egg like Jamie tried to do the other I day. I did not eat it. I cracked it open, I put it in my dish, and I was like... The kids had found an egg no. that had been out there in the corner for a while, and we didn't float it, and she cracked it into the rest with the fresh eggs, and it was not great. So I had to throw out a whole bowl of eggs. But that's why you don't just crack them straight into your frying pan, because if you get a whiff of warm, rotten egg... So to float the eggs, if they float up to the top, it's because they've gone bad and there's a little gas pocket in there. If they sink down to the bottom and settle down to one side, that's a good fresh egg. You can eat it all day long. So I was going to paint this one, but I love the charm. Um, it was painted originally in 1985 from Julie to Rick for to, Christmas. To Julie from Rick oh, to for Julie Christmas, from 1985. It's got a really great like cottage feel to it, which is totally coming back. Um, if you don't know, then look up cottage or cottage core. You're going to find it everywhere. Let's play a guessing game. And you can comment below. I'll wait for a minute to tell people, if, even if you're watching the replay. In 1985, Christmas of 1985, how old was I? Because, you know, we're like, oh, the 80s, that wasn't very long ago. This is totally vintage, hardcore. It's retro. Oh. I'm not calling it vintage. It has to be 40 years old to be vintage, so it has to be four more years, and then it's vintage. Okay. Um, so I think this would work great, you guys, to put, like, you're probably wondering, like, what the heck? It looks like a step stool, but it's not. It's got holes in here to screw into the wall. I would put, like, a dowel here and hang my towels from it. You could do Everybody two says you were four years old. Oh, man, everybody knows how old I am. Deb says nine. <laughs> and Ivana says I got chicken splained. You I did would. just get chicken splained. <laughs> 30 equals vintage. All right, Leslie schooled me. So it 30 is vintage. 30 is vintage. So Thank we're you. not painting it. We will give it a good scrub, but it's got a really great cottage vibe. It already has like this little folk art painting on the bottom. So it's great. I just put a bar here and a towel. And the color it. does fit with what's up and coming with cottage slash farmhouse. Farmhouse in the 2015-ish uh, the era was really just white and light colored woods and that's it you didn't vary from that 
And now a lot of color is being worked in, not necessarily boho, you don't go like super wild with it, but just color like this. I saw this color a lot in brands. Yeah. Like on enamel, on like chippy painted pieces, so. Is it upside down? It is not. No. Nope. Christy says, what about a rolling pin? Let me try it. Let me I try it. I don't know that we have any that would work because ours are all fatties because they're hand turned. I bet we'll you this it. one might work. If you had a, a skinny little rolling pin, it would work. It's and that would fat. be cute. Good job. These are the hand turned ones that we sell on the website that Ty makes. Will that one work? Nope. It's close. I like a good, like I like a good thick handle ones. when I'm rolling stuff out. So that I, when I design these, <laughs> you have a pretty thick handle on there. So $4.99 cool and we're going to sell for $26.95. And it's a shelf, Grambo. You just put like a dowel or a rolling pin on there and then you can hang like a towel or whatever. All right. Yeah, you... Is cottage core like ducks? Um, I'm seeing ducks come back and geese. So don't discount that. But I don't think that the heart with the geese and the little light blue polka dots. I don't think that's coming back. People are painting their geese. Cottage core, to kind of loosely describe it, is things that are not necessarily, like reusing, repurposing things that are that can be useful still in your home that still look, um, look nice and, and have a good aesthetic to them. Yeah, you could totally put a rolling pin in there as long as it was one of the skinnier handles, like the more modern ones would fit in that, or a dowel. So either cottage one core one. really loves granny floral. Leslie says we need to define cottage core. The second we define it's it, it'll hard. define itself. Yeah, it's hard. If you look it up online, you can go Google it. There's like a hundred different definitions. I really feel like it's just kind of simple living, uh, you know, using what you have or, or what you found thrifting or found items, things like that. Um, or repurposing stuff you've made yourself kind of thing. Chickens, sheep in your backyard, totally cottage core. Growing your own vegetables. But sheep in your backyard, you guys want to see something? Hold on. Hang on, we got, we're getting real distracted. It's been a whole week of catching up we've got to do here. I grew these in my own backyard. Cottage core. Those are grown in tubs, old antique tubs. Making your own bread. Maybe I once the how, sod comes in, we'll but... give you guys a good walk around of oh, the gosh, backyard. Oh gosh, it's gonna be a few weeks. That sod, it was real hot last it week. It was like 100 degrees while we were gone and we put the sod in and even though I can water it remotely with my app, it was it, it still is patchy. It's gonna be a minute before it really takes root. It'll come back, but you gotta give it a while. So this is an Atlas Easy Seal. It doesn't have the seal on it. You can always tell that they're older hermetic jars if the lid is rounded. The new versions are more flat, kind of more modern looking. Well, also I love this I love lip apple. above here. Yeah. This is actually a lot like the European jars. Like, do you see the lip that's above the top? I love, love, love it. We found this one at Savers for $8.49 and we're selling it for $6.95. I saw some of these for like astronomical amounts, but I feel like $6.95 is reasonable for it. Yeah. You know, sometimes you, when you're looking at prices, here's a little tip for you when you're looking at prices. We always go with uh, what the cheapest price is. And if it's like on an Etsy shop or an eBay shop, I'll look to see how much that person's actually been selling. Because if they sold a lot of things, they're usually pricing things right. So I'll check and see how much their shop has sold or how many reviews they have or whatever. Because sometimes something like this will be a hundred bucks on there, right? It's not selling, no one's buying it for a hundred dollars. It's a, it's a hermetic jar from the early 1900s. <laughs> Les is ready. She said, next wreath holder. We're actually not getting to the wreath holder next. Um, <laughs> we've got this little enamel pot. If you guys saw all of the camping gear that we bought that we sell on the website as well, um, we had some that had a wood handle and the wood handle is essential for cooking over an open flame because it doesn't get hot like a metal handle. This is actually in really great condition. The inside is like this really light gray speckle. The outside's brown and it's got a wooden knob and handle on it. I don't know exactly how old it is, but it's really cool. So yeah, it is great. I would say it's like a two cup teapot. And um, I would say it's a quart, yeah. It's not, it's not a quart. Let me test it. Let's test it. Oh my gosh. Let's see we're how gonna, much. Okay, Show them the next you, item. Okay, tell them how much it was. $2.99 and we're selling it for how much? $12.95? $12.95. Okay. While he does that, I bought these for $5.99 each. They are heavy duty cast iron. They're wreath holders. These always sell really well. 
Um, and I'm gonna sell them for $9.95 each. This one is black and this one is brown and they both have this like fleur-de-lis motif and then the ornate bottom. This bottom on the black one is bigger, but I actually like the bottom on the brown one better. This is my personal opinion. And these are really great for people that wanna like put wreaths and vignettes or whatever um, because they just hang nicely on here. So I'm gonna move along with those. A lot of people think that when you're thrifting, you gotta buy all old things. I just buy unique things and I like to buy things that if I bought them wholesale would be super expensive so then I can offer a better price than if I was to buy them wholesale. And those are definitely it. Aha! I found it. My, uh, I thought that my measuring cup had gone on walkabout. I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to make waffles tomorrow. Alright, Jamie. Okay, what? Let's see. What, what are we doing? Alright, one cup. I don't know if anyone can even see Where do you again. put a wreath stand? On your buffet, on your entry table. Um, you could even do it like on a dining table who is extra wide for the holidays would look super cute in a vignette. All right, so this clock, we did put a battery in it and it did work and kept time. We took the battery out because we don't ship them with batteries. It was $6.99, we're gonna sell it for $19.95 and it's gonna get painted. My favorite part is that it's all wood and I love all the chunky molding on the bottom. I also love, Odilia would call this a snack hideaway because there's storage <laughs> on the inside so you can put it next to your bed with all your favorite treats and then close it up. And most people would not look inside a clock for treats. So if you need to store anything, there you go. So this is a four cup uh, little kettle here teapot whatever you want to call cup. it so that's so a quart that's, yeah 32 well, ounces really yep Man, four is... cups in there and it's got room to boil no, up out cups. of the top no oh, i guess that is 32. Yeah. you're right you're right i'm wrong yeah, I'm all right it's moving okay. on now that we've talked about me being wrong this is from the jamie ray collection i use these a lot for like tall flowers and stuff to decorate with i have no idea um, what it originally cost, $16.95 here for the one gallon. Some of them, some people can get these like with like, I don't know, alcohol in them or you can get old wine jugs or juice or whatever. But I love these, they've got a great vintage feel. The glass is just a little bit wavy. So we always keep them, but this one's $16.95. Heidi has her wreath stand on her piano. Hey Bree. Oh, that's cool. Um, and Laura says that's great for RVs with limited storage. Okay, we're gonna talk about the false graph in the room. I do not buy this pattern unless it's unique serving pieces. Um, it's not as popular in the plates and the bowl situation, but serving pieces- I think pieces, it's because it's really common. Yeah, serving pieces always do really, really well. This, and I love the pattern on them. It's a very cottagey Americana feel. $6.99 is how much we paid for this soup tureen, I'm gonna sell for $26.95. It comes with the lid and the spoon in good condition. Have you found is... any chips? I don't think there's any no, chips No, I have on these. not found any, but I have not. Like, there could be a flea bite here and there, but I'm not seeing any. And, and then, then we this... also have the serving plate. Yeah, but we haven't talked about the price yet. You gotta wait. I showed them. You, you gotta slow your roll. No, I'm not. No, $5.99 and, are you still talking? No, I'm just mumbling over here. Just give them the price, $5.99. Five ninety nine. <laughs> We're gonna sell it for nineteen ninety five. It has been a long day. This one was two ninety nine, going for twelve ninety five. Yep, and I love the platter. I love the serving dish. The soup tureen is hands down my favorite. Three pieces. Well, is the soup tureen still used? Uh, I guess I don't know. We don't use one, but I, mean, I would use it for decor. Soup, if you're making soup. If you're having like a fancy Americana. Buffet, you put your soup tureen out and you're ready to go. I mean, do people use candelabras? I don't know. So, Jamie's mom, and maybe Jamie herself included, but I think she gets it from her mom, will not put a pan with a hot pad on the table to dish your food out of. She That's won't happy. do it. I, Me, I I'm like, man, don't dirty another dish. What are you doing? And she's over here. She's like, we got to put it in the tureen. So we, I don't usually use tureens. I just use, I have a lot of pretty bowls and stuff, but we eat all of our meals buffet style because there's eight of us that live here. 
And when Mariah, my sister-in-law, comes over, she always gives me a hard time because I, I like if it's shredded cheese, I usually will put it in a bowl. If it's like sour cream, I put it in a bowl. It just looks nice. And we don't eat that many like nice sit-down meals, especially when we're busy. So I like to make it special and aesthetics are important to me. So there you have it. Zeb was raised, if it's cooked in the pot, you put the pot with a pot pad underneath it and then eat it. But the other problem with that too is it's hot and people get burned. And so I don't do that because safety. Ooh, All pot right. roast out of the soup tureen. I like it. $2.49 and I'm selling it for $4.95. There you go. Renee says I won't either, Zeb. So we were <laughs> raised, Renee and I were raised by the same mama. So I don't know if you guys have followed the recent Stanley craze. There's a lot of bloggers out there that are like, oh, Stanley mugs are so amazing. And it's funny because I'm like, I've been buying, all my girlfriends are really into them, and Mariah might be watching, but legit, I we have like 90 texts in my girlfriend chat about Stanley mugs, but not the old ones, the new ones, and I'm like, I've been buying those vintage for years, I didn't know they were still super popular, but anyways, this is a vintage Stanley it's mug. It's an Aladdin Industries, Inc., Nashville, Tennessee, also, and on the bottom it's stamped Aladdin slash Stanley. It's heavy duty, so they were like the first uh bottle water bottle company whatever thermos company to really get down the double wall technology and this one is vintage but it still will keep your drinks cold for a long time your hot things hot for a long time it's super heavy duty it does have a little bite it does out have of bite. the lid right here we tested it i put water in it and left it upside down on the counter like this for a few hours and nothing. no leaks on the counter, no drips, nothing. So we're gonna, part, we're gonna go ahead and say it works and is fully functional. This part here is for looksies. It's not waterproofing. The waterproofing is the seal and the part that actually screws. And so it it's comes with functional. its cup. Perfect for camping or football games. Um, these normally sell for around $30, but because it doesn't have, the, it has that bite, we're gonna sell it for $19.95 and we paid $3.99. I also love the green color on it. Really you know good. how sometimes you get these and they're older and they've got like really bad coffee stains or, or whatever someone was drinking out of them, tea stains, things like that. Like this is pristine. It's, it looks almost brand new other than that chip and a little bit of uh, scratches on the outside. Can we see inside the, the thermos? Yeah, it's actually got water in it. Cause it I haven't dried it, it out yet, it. but I, this is from testing. When we tell you that we put a battery in something or we put water in something, we really do. This is our test kitchen, literally. All right, so this was purchased. I'll dry that out so it doesn't get mildewy before we get it to you. This was purchased at DI for five dollars. We're gonna sell it for twenty four ninety five, and it's gonna get painted and waxed, and it's a cookie jar. It'll still be functional as a cookie jar, even though we're painting the outside, because the inside could be wiped out, but you won't be able to like put it in dishwasher. But this isn't really the type of cookie jar that you would put in. You dishwasher know, in all place. my time as a human. I have never put one of these in a dishwasher or for that matter, even scrubbed them off while they were in use at my home. Well, you don't do a lot of the scrubbing. No, I'm just saying no one was scrubbing this one either because it's got, the, it's got the fur. <laughs> it's got the fur. So it's going to get the clean before we paint it. Tip 101. If you got the fur and you're going to paint it, you also have to clean it. All right. Yeah. We're going to show these really quick. These are little like ceramic drawers that we got for $1.99 each. We're gonna paint just the front of them because they're kind of dated and wax them. And we're gonna sell them for $6.95. I think they would be perfect for little succulent planters. So there's a chicken and a cow, um, a pig and a rooster. And we're selling them individually because I don't know that somebody wants four of these, but sometimes people will want just like one animal as their favorite or whatever. So Zeb's gonna show you a sneaky peeky of the new decoupage papers. Disclaimer, this is on not the decoupage tissue paper. We had them printed on our local printer for test prints, but you can see the styles. So I'll show you that and then we're gonna get into painting. A couple of these are slightly different. So when you look at the, uh, you, you'll get the gist, but like we said, test prints and we're waiting on the final prints to come. They should be here in the next week or two. And then we'll ship them out to you if you guys have been participating in the pre-order. But everybody's been asking for birds. So we've got a really fun bird decoupage paper. If you don't know what decoupage paper is, or uh, a lot of people call it, uh, what is that? Is it, uh, I can't remember the other name of it. 
Not no. Tissue paper? Tissue paper, obviously. It's 18 pound paper that it comes on. Something else, I can't remember. Like, I want to say like sugar paper, fly paper. I can't remember. What is it? It's got another term that people use for it, but this is the bird's one. That's how that's going to look. That is the final on that one. Um, this is also the final on this one. We've been, we, we got some people on the coast that have been dying for some colorful nautical. And uh, we, we took both out in one fell swoop and you get two mermaid styles. So the mermaids, the reason why I thought two individual big mermaids is because if I made them any bigger, they would be too distorted. They're a little watercolory as is, but if I made them a bit bigger. So what I did was I gave them similar coloring because the original vintage prints that we licensed, you always have to change it anyways. Rice paper, that's the word. Rice they paper, do. thanks. I was like, fly sugar, what's it called? <laughs> um, the original artwork was not the same color, but it looked weird having two very different prints next to each other. So I colorized them to make them similar. Nice. I'm learning the art of the graphic design on Photoshop. It is hard, people, especially for creatives that just want, I just want to paint it on my screen. Okay, so this one is the most changed out of any paper I'm going to show you. This is just the gist of the stylization. The flowers have changed in the background and they're much smaller and more to scale with the flowers in the front. Yeah, but, you can pick them up at JamieRayVintage.com or find a JRV retailer, but always check and make sure they carry them because not every retailer carries all the products that we have. So just play with Okay, so this one is, that's what it's gonna look like vaguely. Flowers are similar, they're just smaller, different sizes, and a couple, there's a sunflower in the back on the other one. I left this one black and white because I love to go in and watercolor stuff or use like a, uh, and it's, it's a white, it's gonna be on the white tissue paper. So whatever color you do underneath should show through pretty well. If you do white, you're gonna get just white, a black and white theme but if you do like a blue or a pink or a purple or something like that that's going to pull through that white paper a little bit and so your flowers will then be that color yeah. and then we have another nautical one we have eight new papers i only have five to show you tonight um big ships there it's a it looks black and white but it's a like a navy blue tint in real life but four big ships for you and yes, I know there's still a tag on here. I'm not painting those side. I'll take it off later. I gotta get my razor. We gotta paint. start getting painting done. Yeah. Um, I had to wash the fur off of this one. And then this one is like, uh, I hope you guys love this one because it took me the longest to make. Each element is, so some of them, they come in a design and we'll blow it up and change a few things and colorate them and layer. This one, each individual, there are no ads that look like this anywhere else. Seb made each individual ad. Each individual element was added, <laughs> um, but I wanted it to look like an old vintage newspaper ad, but be big enough that you could use it on like trays, risers, totes, things like that. Um, we, we got something for everybody, a little bit of blacksmith, we got a butcher shop, we got fresh produce, um, there's a perfume shop, uh, um, some tooling down here for for uh, tool repair. We've got some bicycles down there with a bicycle ad, some dairy, uh, something for the shoes, uh, some prams, and then a courier service. So lots of things on this one. So you obviously could use, any of our papers can be used as a whole, but that one was also designed so it could be cut up for the individual elements. It really bugs me when I see decoupage paper and the balance is off. Um, and it doesn't look good as a whole sheet. Even though most people don't use the entire sheet on projects, I, my biggest pet peeve, like I have to design it so it looks good overall. All right, I got about 10 minutes to paint. I'm gonna paint something real fast. All right, you paint, I'm scrubbing fur off and stuff. Scrubbing fur off? Yeah, the fur layer. I'm using my scrub brush here. Okay. So there are, there are a couple other designs, there's, well, three other designs that I didn't show you because we didn't wait for the test print because we were happy with 
the way they print it on our small little printer. New stencils won't be out for a few more weeks, but yeah. you will get those, you will know as soon as we get them in. The nice thing is that we do free shipping, so don't feel like you gotta wait for the stencils for the paper, you know, it all, it will all ship. Unless so you, you order DIY products. Yes, that... DIY paint is not free shipping. So the decoupage paper and the paint is from jamierayvintage.com. Also, I need to disclose this because we get asked this all the time. Just because somebody is a JRV wholesale retailer does not mean they carry all the same products as us. So that just means that they carry some of the items or all of the items that we wholesale and then whatever else they carry. So some people have been like, well, I went to your retailer, but they didn't have DIY paint. Well, DIY paint's not my brand, so they can carry whatever they want. Yep. We're pretty easy going. We don't... Uh... We don't have a lot of restrictions to be one of our retailers. We just want you to have fun with the items that we're creating for you and, uh, you know, have fun with them. No, the other three are being released now. We just don't have the test prints. Here yeah, to show you. so the other three, I'm trying to even remember what they are. There's another. Uh, There's another floral. Floral. There's the Bee and Barn. Yep, and then what's the last one? I can't, it's like slipping my brain. I can't remember. Look on the phone real quick. Oh <laughs> we, we, well, the reason it's hard to remember is because we have eight peepers that we've finalized on, but we probably designed uh, upwards of like 10 or 15. Well, and then a lot of like stuff got scrapped or redone completely, you know, things like that when you're, when you're going through it. So I'm just getting, there's hot glue on the top of this. I'm just going to get this off and give it a quick coat of white. I also designed all of our stencils like at the same time. Yeah. Stencils take a little bit longer because I design them and then they actually go to a graphic designer to finish. Yeah, because they have to make them work as a stencil so they don't they don't come apart on you. Whereas the papers, once we design them, they're ready to go to print. Yeah. All right, let's see. Oh, the cottage floral. Don't forget the cottage floral. Cottage floral is so good. I wanted it that It looks like vintage print. old uh, wallpaper. wallpaper. So who, where are my drawer liners out there? Where are you guys at? We got perfect paper for that. The, the cottage floral is a great color. I was actually thinking that maybe I will take some of the designs that we have because we've licensed it so we can do what we want with it and do some fun things like make some fun phone cases or like pillows, things like that. Shirts, we want to do some fun shirts. So, you know, when I'm in my free time, we'll do some cool new shirts and hats. I've been actually meaning to do it since January and other more important things have been keep coming up. And you gotta be in the mood to design. If you're creative, you can't just like, and Jamie, Jamie is like a big proponent of this. Sometimes I'll force it and sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't, no, but if you're, like but if you're not in the mood, if she's not in the mood to be creative, like if it's late at night and she just wants to go lay down in bed and have a snack and watch TV, there's like whatever she creates, like it won't be good. So she doesn't even bother. <laughs> yeah. And if I try to force it, I could spend all day trying to create something. If I'm in the mood, I can do, I can whip well. Not one has decoupage paper because I'm not going to Photoshop. But when it's like stencils, I can do an entire stencil line in a matter of a few hours. Because it still has to go to the graphic designer and have final approval and stuff, but the concept. Oh, this little, this one has a little chip in that. Maybe just close that. In the back. Yeah. All right. Okay. Not on the front. I'm just taking it. All right, I spent a lot of time talking about papers. Now I only have five minutes to finish this. One of the things I like to use, guys, Kitchen I'll show you. I'm just using the French soap because I swear it does, works for everything. But a good scrub brush is important. This is our pot scrubber. It's got agave bristles, so not like the cheap plastic ones. Um, and it's bamboo, which is sustainable. We sell these on the website too. But I like this style of brush when I'm scrubbing stuff because it really gets the fur layer off. When you're painting decor, look at look at my brush strokes here. I'm not even paying attention. Just, so you can't, did you get the I got the wax. Oh, yeah, I got, I got the heat oh, gun right good. here. I was like, you can't just paint that. You just, so just you don't sorry. worry about it. You just Hold cling on. on it up. I don't want to interrupt you, but I know we're going to get asked. Zeb is using beadboard. 
And I am using prairie gray and we're using Klingon brushes. The prairie gray probably almost looks, oh no, that's the more brown. I'm thinking of gravel road. Yeah. But don't, don't sweat it. If you're a first timer or, or newer to painting your home decor and furniture, just kick at the brush and start putting paint on there. It's hard, hard to mess it up, especially if you're gonna distress it back and wet distress it. You know, use that high grit sandpaper or water. Sorry, I need to pull back comments. And sometimes we do the brush strokes like crazy on purpose because... Oh, Caitlin says I'm un hard to understand by the sink. Yeah, when you're over there talking. Sorry, guys. You're like, <laughs> the water's running and you're talking away from the camera. We haven't found mics that work good on live videos yet. So, so. I figured out how to use the thing. I need, I had a, a power pack because my battery will only last approximately an hour in my fancy camera. And so I have several batteries. No big deal when you're just filming, right? But when you're doing a live stream, if your battery dies and you can't, you can't just like pick it back up, you gotta restart the live stream. So I've, I uh, ordered up a piece that would be like a plug-in that bypasses the battery power, but it was not what I thought it was going to be and not compatible with my camera, even though it had lots of reviews that said it was. So if we can use our DSLR, then we could use our fancy microphones? So yep. Oh, okay. So I have to get the right battery pack piece because I'm too nervous to, I mean, I would be comfortable doing like a half hour live stream, but when you're doing video, it takes a lot of battery anyway, so I don't think it would make the full hour. Less the chickens are good. They happily live with our sheep. They only get a little bit scared by Han and Chewy, um, but because they They're now, much <laughs> yeah, they live in the sheep pen, and so they have lots more room to roam than before, and so they're very, very happy about that. They spend a lot of time digging in the ground. And even discovered that they can escape every now and then. Yeah, and they don't go very far. We need, well, it's just one side we need to put chicken wire on. The yeah, sheep the can't, can't get, get out, out but, but the chickens yeah. are like, we're tiny little bantams. We're just going to sneak right on by here and go roam the whole yard. And it's funny because only one or two will sneak out at a time, not all of them. You'd think they'd be like, oh, freedom, but they really just like where they're at. They're like, the food's here, the water's here. They're good. They live under an apple tree and they... They're not they, sad about that. The yeah. apples are starting to fall. The ones that have had worms or whatever in them are falling Which, off the tree. Worms even better when you're a chicken. Yeah. It's funny because we don't have a big yard. We're only like a quarter of an acre. And so that side of the yard is like the chicken slash sheep. That's why they share a pen because we don't have a huge yard. Um, so they share a pen and then we have the trampoline and the apple, the two apple trees. And then this side is our pool side. So the sheep have been on a couple of walks now and they're actually doing really good on the leash. They were pretty sketch, but they're a month and a half older now than when we first tried. And they're like, what? You mean we get to go all over the neighborhood on and this like, leash? And they'll, they'll go. <laughs> Redrick has to bring his little pooper scooper. Yeah, Redrick, Eliza will walk them, uh, usually with a friend. And Redrick comes behind with the, <laughs> the scoop. Sheep poop everywhere. All these pictures of all these influencers and their sheep are in their house. Oh. I'm like, that is not real. Those sheep are pooping all over your house. Debbie sent me a picture. She's like, you should photograph your stuff with chickens. And I was like, do people really want chicken poop all over their stuff? Because that is what will happen if I photograph like a pretty photo shoot with the chickens in my house with your antique finds that you're going to buy. There will be poop on them because chickens and sheep poop non-stop they are poop machines chickens will look you straight in the eye and drop a nugget they don't care we picked up the sheep in zeb's pretty nice truck it's a pretty bougie work truck um definitely a work truck <laughs> definitely work heavy on the work but it is comfortable it has all the wells and whistles and he deserves it but we're picking up the sheep and he's like well i'll just put them in the second row of the sheep so I flipped the mind seats you up. we've got leather seats like they're heated cooled like whatever he's like it's okay i have a rubber floor mat so he puts a blanket down i told him to put down a tarp like a tarp in the back he's like no a blanket will be just fine we pick up the sheep and we get there and the breeder is like looking at us like you are not putting those sheep in that truck are you and i was like yeah it's fine the second they get in there they stop start dropping nuggets and they don't stop pooping until we get home and it's 45 minutes to where we picked them up at and we had not stopped by the feed store to get the essentials so i stayed in the car for about 30 minutes while zeb was going around ifa to pick up all the sheep essentials 
So it's all total is like an hour and a half and these sheep are pooping all over the back of his truck. And it reminded me of that Duck Dynasty episode where she gets the goats and they're pooping all over the Escalade. Basically same thing for how nice that truck is. But we all survived. There might still be a few sheep nuggets underneath the sheep so the seat somewhere. The good news is that sheep poop. I didn't want to drive on the freeway 70 miles an hour. They're only babies. They're <laughs> like, little, they're they're little sheep guys. Babies, so they're gonna be they, the were only, they were only eight weeks old. <laughs> I mean, I don't care because I would want them inside anyways. But I thought for sure he was going to have a cow about his truck. It was he, on the rubber mat. After it's he fine. broke it in with the sheep, we took it camping the next weekend. And he's, he's like, the, the truck has been desecrated so we can do whatever we want with it. Anyways. Not what you thought we were going to talk about tonight, huh? <laughs> uh, Bobby says, any animals go in the pool? No. So sheep no. cannot swim. So sheep, our sheep only come out of the pen. What happens is they could probably swim, but their wool weights them down. Uh, their legs are like this long and they're this wide. Oh, they float like, like anybody. Yeah, and it, they'll <laughs> sink to the bottom. Uh, so sheep don't swim. Our sheep stay in their pen and they only come out of their pen if they're on their leash. So there's that. And the chickens haven't gone anywhere near the pool. They probably could swim. The chickens are not interested in getting wet. Those are some fluffy little birds. And they're like, you know what? I'm going to stay far away. Yeah, they do need, one of them has a messy bum and needs a bath. Yeah. All the farm animals at the Ray House need a bath. It's been a long summer. <laughs> Wrap a pool noodle around us. <laughs> Deborah was laughing about when the girls took the sheep for a walk. Yeah, they're pretty funny. Well, it's fun to see them because they look from from a distance. They look like dogs, right? Yeah, they're, they're, they're white and black. They look like fluffy dogs. They look like big, overweight dogs because <laughs> they got these short little legs and they're really round bodies. And, and, then, for, they're not and then you get up close, they're and they're like these jolly little sheep, and they're, they've got like a little trot, and they'll jump and hop and do like a little skip kind of thing. It's, they're just fun. They're fun. And they have a lot of personality, and they know their names. They've they got their, their names, names down, and. Uh, They've been, they, so we've got two weather rams, meaning they're fixed. Uh, we didn't want any sheep babies, and they actually actually produce the best wool. We haven't decided if we're gonna do anything with the wool or not. We might just leave it with whoever shears them as like a bonus. We don't know who's gonna shear them. Because they have, their wool is supposedly like cashmere off of these weather rams. Um, but they, uh, They've discovered that they like to have a little tussle every now and then. They've been like headbutting each other and trying to get the chickens involved. And the chickens are fast, they just move out of the way. The but. chickens aren't having any of it, but they have been like ramming each other. The funniest thing today, I'm floating around in the pool. And the sheep pen is not that far from the pool, what, like 15 feet maybe? Yeah. From the pool? Uh, no, it's probably 30. Okay, maybe 30 feet. And I'm floating around the pool and I see Han. Han is the white sheep, he's the bigger of the two. Han is backing it up to the fence. He sticks his butt so far up the fence that the fur has separated around the post of the fence. And then he does this. He had an itch and he was using the fence to scratch it. <laughs> oh my gosh, I died. Farm animals are just funny. And then the chickens, like, because we have silky bantams, they have all these feathers. And Jack, his job is to pick up all the apples that fall off the tree. And the chickens love them some apples, so Ze Jack throws them in the chicken coop. Because the chickens can get away from the sheep. They can get into their coop, and they have a little area underneath, and the sheep can't get in. So when we put food in for the chickens, we put it in there so the sheep won't eat it, because sheep have temperamental stomachs. And Jack is throwing these apples in, and you see ten little fluffy butts running to the apples. I mean, it's just funny. <laughs> we have a good time. Yeah. We missed, we, Disneyland was amazing. We had a lot of fun, but uh, we we're pretty our, much set up to be homebodies. <laughs> yeah, we, we missed our house. We like to hang out around here. Especially now that the pool's mostly done. Still gotta figure out the heater on the hot tub part. <laughs> Cart said we used to have a bull that sat like a dog. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Les says, can you imagine Jamie birth and baby sheep? Eh, I could probably figure out how to. You know, situation that that would actually probably fall under a Zeb category. Zeb and I don't really have like, oh, that's your job or that's my job. There are definitely things that we excel at, and there are some things that I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna let you handle that. I think birth and sheep. Would my be other calling besides woodworking, I I probably could have, should have, 
done something along the lines of veterinarian. I'm, I'm like the little, yeah. I'm like the little wounded kitten whisperer. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. had a, we had a feral cat one time that oh, was wanting gosh. to claw my eyes out and it had a collar on it that someone had put on it and one arm was stuck through the collar and it was, and it was infected all the way around it. And I, I nursed that It was not our cat. cat. I had welding Maddie's gloves on. Cat. No, I don't think it was even it was my Maddie's. sister's. It, it was, was just, it's like a cat that they found, but then it was pretty wild so they could never get to it. Anyway, I caught it and it I got that Maddie's collar cat. off of it, but it, I had welding gloves on and that little kitten bit me through the welding gloves. <laughs> But we got her we got her nurse back to health and she was fine. She's a good little mouser after that. It doesn't matter how bougie we get, we're still a little country, so don't you ever no, worry I'm about people are like don't you watch change. watch out, I'm a lot of country. <laughs> if it can be DIY'd or or it's been done on a farm, there's a good today, chance I'll try it. <laughs> today I had Odelia had to work at the shop because Tanea went to Lake Powell. Um, and I was super tired and I'm legit in my pajamas with no bra on and my pajamas equals like Zeb sweats and t-shirt and I'm in the store and the shop is open and I'm just praying the whole time like please don't let anybody come in while I'm like roaming around the shop dressed like this and I didn't change for a while I went to a yard sale like that I did I do think I put a bra on before I went to the yard sale but that's about it Okay, I will paint the bottom on this just because it's kind of messy. Right. Not going to do it right now though because it's a pain to paint the bottom when you're on a live stream and trying to wet distress. But wanna, this, wanna, if you remember the scratchy distress versus my wet paper towel method, you can use a rag, just, just damp water. You don't want it so sopping wet that it's going to make the paint run. But I feel like this situation really still brings out all the detail. And you could go heavier, but I'm going to leave it just like that. Show Mozart. Oh, we didn't show the Mozarts. Show them real quick. These are ceramic. These plastic. ones are these ones aren't plastic, but all of them sold from the last ones. They're basically. No, we like, have two left out of the six. Oh, we have two time. left. Yeah. So four sold. Um, but these ones are a little more detailed than ceramic. And so we bought them for a dollar each, and I'm gonna paint them in white wax and make them look like stone. They've got and felt then bottoms. I knew there was something else that was missing. But these are fun. I love busts. They're really popular. All right, I think we're done. I'm not done. You're going to show them? I'm going to white wax. I'm going to show them one finished You're going to white wax. I'm going to keep distressing. I think this needs a little more. All right, more. can you check for comments? Yeah, I'll watch the comments. Oh, oh Mimi Malone says that uh, they blew up the chicken coop they when up. they lit a match in the coop, and it was not a good thing. Oh, that, were that the chickens okay, or were they down? Uh, Les, I think they're born pretty fluffy on those baby sheep. I don't, I mean, most most animals that I know of are born pretty furry and fuzzy unless they're like... Human, human babies too. All unless my babies they're like bald furry. birds. <laughs> all my babies had a full body of fur. Jack was the most hairy of all my babies. But even like little chickens come out all fuzzy and fluffy. The kids must have left the light on in the pool. There's like a disco party happening in the back. Yeah. We had to make them get out because Odilia was like, I'm not watching them. And technically, we don't really like to leave that on Odilia anyway. Uh, They're not allowed to be in a pool without an adult, but if Odilia is out there, they can swim yeah. and she watches them. As long as we're like, if we're but, the And Grandma, it's real smoky. There's a bunch of fires up in Idaho and Washington, and it's blowing down into our valley here. And so Jamie's mom... Uh, with her COPD can't really be out there to watch them right now either because grandma does like to sit by the pool and watch the kids Yeah, grandpa does too. We have a bunch of loungers and Jack can swim. Jack is such a smart little cookie He could like kind of paddle a little bit, but since we got in the pool He can swim the length of the pool back and forth. No problem. He watched some YouTube videos So Kai wants an update on the city and meeting house. We're in the same place. We were gone for a week We still have to get the uh, appraisal and the environmental study done. It's kind of hard because this time of year is always like slower for retail business. So it's like not the best time of year for the bank to be looking at all your financials. I'm like, I promise it picks up. So now if you see me selling a lot of stuff in the next few weeks, it's because I want to show the bank like, hey, I can, I can be super we can pay. We can pay for this church. <laughs> so the city is all done, approved. Um, we are working with the SBA now, so I've got to talk. They have some questions, and it's just hard because, you know, there's big companies or companies that have been 
profitable for a long time, but we have literally just been trying to make ends meet for so long and we're finally to the point where we're, okay, yeah, we're doing good. But we, they ask me questions about things like, I don't know. And a lot of our stuff isn't very like separate because when you're just barely making it, you just take whatever money you have from wherever to make it. So it's been interesting um, to try to figure that all out. Right, I put a little more distress on that. You can go any color. We also like to take these and make them look like they're cement. Um, so kind of this color that Jamie's got, is this prairie gray or weathered wood? I think it's prairie, prairie gray. gray. So this prairie gray color starts out kind of like this brownish gray. It does look gray when it's dry. And then once it's white wax, Jamie will show you in just a sec, you can get almost like a cement look from something that's actually resin. Sorry, this is still a little wet. So or if yours are already cement, you know, you can judge them up, make them look cool, however you want to do. But just some fun stuff to, uh, right. so to do on a Saturday after. night with your, with your thrift haul stuff. It's got a little cow on it, it's super cute. So what I'll do now is I'll take off this tag, I'll remove any of the other paint that's left over, and then I'll let it sit overnight and buff it. And then all these little drawers now have kind of a fun farmhouse vibe. All right, where's my phone? Okay, really quick, I need you guys, if you're still here watching with us or you watch to the end on the replay, I need you to do something for me. In the comments below, write down what you guys want to see. We've got a bunch of videos planned and things we want to do, but I want to know what you guys want to see, what you need help with, with your summer projects, uh, whether it's bleed through issues or paint blending or whatever. Jamie and I <clears throat> aren't necessarily the best at everything, but we've tried everything and so we know what can go wrong and maybe help you through some stuff. So comment below and then out of all the stuff you comment, I'm gonna pick some things and put it in a poll on community which can be found on the homepage of our channel, Jamie Ray Vintage on YouTube. You go to the community tab and you can see that poll and then you guys can vote and we're gonna start making a few videos on what you guys wanna see and what you need help with because you know ultimately, that's why we started the channel was so we could help you guys figure out how to make a few extra bucks or make your home look beautiful without having to spend a ton of money just by thrifting it. So, all right, you guys, thanks for joining us tonight. Um, if you want to purchase the items from tonight, I'll just remind you, jrvhome.com is where you can get the thrifted items as well as our clothes. We sell a bunch of handmade items, vintage, antique. Um, and then if you want paint and wax and decoupage paper, um, an IOD, all the things you need to make over your projects, that's jamierayvintage.com. Be sure, if you like this video, to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more. DIY. Bye, you guys. I think I can reach. Can you reach? Oh.